5, we are not biased at all. We just love to report the facts. And with more than 12 plane crashes, 13 murders, and 10 suicides, that's a lot of death. But not just any death. Join us as we look at the connection to Bill and Hillary Clinton and their alleged death victims. It all begins with Ron Brown. Now, there's a reason that Ron Brown is first on our list. He was the first African American to become the US Secretary of Commerce, and he also served during the first term of Bill Clinton's presidency. So how exactly did Ron Brown die, and why are people so suspicious about the circumstances that surround his death? As it turns out, Brown was killed during a plane crash near Dubrovnik in Croatia in 1996, and many people believe that Bill Clinton was involved in his murder. Brown was near indictment and threatened Clinton that he would not go down alone. The day afterwards, Brown's lawyer was murdered in a drive-by shooting. And the day after that, an air traffic controller in charge of the plane during the crash was found dead. Now, Brown may have been shot in the head during the flight, according to x-rays, and the United States claims that there was no black box found on the plane, even though television shows aired teams pulling it out. Sounds rather suspicious, don't you think? Bill Shelton and Kathy Ferguson. We're putting these two together on our list because they were engaged. They were also both connected to Clinton and both died just one month apart. And what was their cause of death? Well, it was ruled as a suicide. But was it really? Let's have a closer look. Kathy Ferguson was a witness during Bill Clinton's sexual assault case that involved Paula Jones. She was found dead in Shelton's apartment with a gunshot wound in her head. At the time, it was ruled a suicide. But why would this woman have several suitcases packed if she wasn't going somewhere? And what about her fiance, Bill Shelton? Well, a month later, Shelton apparently killed himself at her gravesite. And of course, it just sounds like your typical heartbreak Romeo and Juliet scenario. But he was also killed with a gunshot wound to the head. And the coroner who examined his wound said that it was very similar to Ferguson's. Either this is a complete coincidence, or everyone is becoming really skilled at self-inflicted headshots these days. Moving right along, we find ourselves with the mysterious case of Barbara Wise. Wise's death is by far the most mysterious out of any on our list. The Commerce Department employee apparently worked closely with Ron Brown and another associate. She was also suspected of leaking certain commerce documents which allegedly exposed Chinese espionage, which is, of course, plenty of reasons to get on Clinton's bad side. Someone must have had a really deep hatred for the woman, because she was found dead and locked inside of her own office. She was also bruised from her head down to her waist, and to this date, no one's ever... We understand we live in a dangerous world. The enemies of freedom are real head down to her waist, and to this date, no one's ever discovered the reason why. Plenty of speculation surrounding the event leads many to think that she was tortured for hours on end before her death. It also leads you to wonder why the Commerce Department apparently doesn't have any security cameras around their building. And following victims who died by headshot, we find Ed Willie. Willie was involved in plenty of Clinton's fundraising events, and his cause of death? You guessed it, suicide, with a perfect shot to the head. But it gets even weirder once we dig into some of the background. In 1993, Willie's wife, Kathleen Willie, had a job-seeking meeting with Clinton as the couple faced plenty of financial difficulties. During this meeting, she claims that the president sexually assaulted her, Little did she know that her husband was already lying dead in the woods, with a suicide note saying that he apologized for the financial situation. Now, was this a mere coincidence or a quick warning shot? These days, Kathleen is still very anti-Clinton and has already expressed her desires for Trump to win the upcoming election. And you've probably heard of Stanley Hurd and Steve Dixon, right? 
Well, if you haven't, Dixon was a counsel to Heard, and Heard was a counsel to Clinton's mother, stepfather, and brother. Anything else these two have in common? Well, both of them died in a plane crash. On the exact same plane. And if that's not suspicious enough for you, get this. Their plane took off and had to make an emergency landing as a fire erupted on board. Everyone was able to exit the plane, and then they rented a new plane. And then guess what happened? They discovered a new issue on the new plane and had to return again. On the way back to the airport, the plane just mysteriously crashed, and someone had enough of their playing around. But not all of the victims died by headshot or plane crash. Now we focus on the murder of Seth Rich, a Democratic National Committee staffer who was killed in July of 2016 when the police found his body on the floor and quickly ruled it an attempted robbery. But there's something odd here. All of his personal items, his wallet, and his phone were still in his possession. But what makes Seth Rich so special? And why would he even be a target? Some people suspect that he could have been involved in a large DNC email WikiLeaks scandal and was persuaded by Bernie Sanders. Kind of strange, isn't it? And have you ever heard people say, if I'm ever found dead, it was murder in the movies? Well, film comes to real life in the form of Victor Thorne. Victor Thorne is our next alleged Clinton murder victim. Thorne wrote several books exposing both of the Clintons, and he allegedly killed himself on his birthday. Now, unlike most of the victims, he shot himself on the top of a mountain. Whether or not it was a self-inflicted headshot is unknown, but if it was, you can kind of figure out where the story goes from there. Thorne told the Russell Scott Show host, Russell, if I'm ever found dead, it was murder. I would never kill myself. Are you sure of that, Mr. Thorne? But these events go way back and include Jerry Parks. Parks was Clinton's head of gubernatorial security in Little Rock, Arkansas. He was shot seven times at a deserted intersection while driving through Little Rock. Parks' wife and son claim that his death was not a coincidence, and according to them, Parks had plenty of files stating the sexual escapades of Bill Clinton. He was also reportedly hired by Vince Foster on behalf of Hillary Clinton, who was convinced that her husband wasn't faithful. Both Parks and Foster were killed. Now, it makes things even weirder that a reporter claims that the exact files that Parks' wife and son were talking about were stolen from his office just a few weeks before his death. And of course, Parks is connected to our next two victims, Kevin Ives and Donald Henry. These two teenagers were found dead on some railroad tracks in Arkansas and were killed way before the train ever hit them. Their death was quickly ruled a drug overdose, but several people claim that it was just a cover-up. A witness states that they saw police beating the boys, which could mean that the teens had some involvement in a drug smuggling operation surrounding Bill Clinton. And why do people think that their deaths were not accidental? Autopsies reveal that Kevin died from a crushed skull before he was ever placed on the tracks, and Donald? Well, he was stabbed in the back, and not metaphorically. Kevin and Donald are both connected to the death of John Hillier. The NBC cameraman was working on several cases that could easily expose the Clintons, and he was also involved in exposing the Arkansas drug smuggling operation. Hillier and his associates became friends of Gary Parks, the son of Jerry Parks, who we mentioned earlier, and they stayed at the safe house where they could discuss the events and further mysteries behind the Clintons. And if that's not convincing enough for you, each person that Hillier tried to interview regarding the case mysteriously died and it became enough for Hillier to fear for his life. One day, he called up his journalist and stated that he discovered new leads for the case. They planned on meeting, but apparently Hillier died of a heart attack just a few days later. Was it a coincidence? Maybe too much stress to look after his health? We may never know. And the list goes on and on and on, including Vince Foster, Hillary's law partner who suspiciously died, 
of course believed to be a suicide. But what do you know? Tell us in the comments below. And while you're here, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one and check out some of our other videos on the Clinton.